I feel like I'm gonna die. <laughs> Hey, what's going on everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today we're joined by superwoman Lily Singh. Hey, hey, hey. She's a YouTube juggernaut with more than 14 million subscribers, a writer, producer, actress, and New York Times best-selling author. But how does she handle her hot wings? We'll find out today, <laughs> Lily. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much for thinking I'm cool enough to be here. And you know what? I've heard you say that you're a pansy when it comes to spices. Absolutely the Has worst. Has that evolved over time or no? Absolutely not. If anything, it's gotten worse. Um, I'm the worst first Indian person on the planet, because I can't take spices. Well, we've got the vegan wings lined up. Are you ready to Thank get weird, Lily? Yes, I am. Let's do it. It's already hot. <laughs> These are amazing. Per Natalie Portman's request, we get them from Bulan now. Who I just met actually a couple days ago. Really? Mm hmm. I was at Zeitgeist and she did this really cool talk about just women's rights and feminism. But she, the cool thing she did is she involved men in the conversation so well. And I was like, the way you did that is so great. Because when I do that, like a lot of guys are just like, shut up. That she did it with such grace. It was great. Did the same with veganism on our show, you know? If you can somehow yeah. nuance it and be kind of persuasive. The best way is to involve people in conversation. She does that so well. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So as we touched on in your intro, you've been one of the biggest stars on the internet for the better part of a decade, racking up billions of views, tens of millions of subscribers, and hitting a couple of Forbes lists along mm -hmm. the way. What role did a Hot Ones alum and friend of the brand, Harley Morenstein, play in helping you level up? Oh my god, that's a great question. So when I was starting YouTube, I was a complete loner and loser and nerd, and I knew nothing about it. You know, I was living in Toronto, and everyone else was in LA and in the industry and in, in the heart of it all. I slid into his DMs, I'm like, hey Harley, you know, I would love if you could educate me a little bit on the YouTube game. It wasn't even creepy or weird, he wasn't even trying to go there. <laughs> he just sat down with me and just educated me on everything related to the game. And his conversation is actually what prompted me to take YouTube seriously and make it a career. So I owe a lot of my success to Harley. Shout out to Harley. And beard goals. Yeah, for I'm sure. I'm working on mine, but it's me still too. like not there completely. Well, if you need some if tips, If you I'll zoom in, me. you'll see like a, <laughs> don't. But you'll see like a little bit, but I'm working on it still, you know? And then in the entertainment industry across the board, but particularly in YouTube, there's this spotlight on mental health mm -hmm. because there's this pressure to deliver so consistently and then you're met with all this immediate feedback. Right. Do you feel the same pressure with every upload to please your audience or does that ease over time? Absolutely. <laughs> I, I know the answer people want to hear is like, you get thick skin. And yeah, you get thick skin when it comes to hate comments and stuff. But every upload is kind of like, people don't like this one. It stresses me out. We'll get as much views as the last one. And it's weird because you're self-aware that it's not healthy. Like, right. you know that measuring your success by views is not healthy. So some of the lessons I've had to teach myself is views don't define me. Subscribers don't define me. And just say that over yeah. and over in the But mirror. then I'll hit 15 million. I'll be like, just hit 15 million subscribers. So it's like you're self aware, but you still make bad choices. I'm gonna front for as long as I can. I can see the strength in your eyes. <laughs> it's good though. <clears throat> it's good. So your list of collaborations is impressive to say the least. Talking first world problems with Bill Gates, having a dinner date in Hawaii with The Rock, and then playing iPhone games with Michelle Obama. Mm -hmm. And here in the hot ones, we know firsthand how hard it is to target a high profile celebrity and then get them to agree right. to eat the wings of death mm -hmm. here. When you think about all the times you had to go above and beyond and hustle for a guest, is there a story that stands out? Yes. Um, Hawaii was super, the one you mentioned with Dwayne was super challenging because I went there and they were in the process of promoting Jumanji. So they were right. really busy and they had way more important things to do. And every two seconds I was like, just wanted to run this script by you. Uh, ultimately, Kevin Hart was not able to do the collab anymore. This was five minutes before we were supposed to shoot. So my day-to-day -day manager, Kyle, had to step in and act alongside Dwayne five minutes before we shot the video. 
Oh, yeah. so in so that when you video watch when it, there's yeah. Dwayne's friend, yes, it's that's actually my day day manager wow. who literally doesn't act. And we gave the script to 30 seconds before, and he was sweating and dying to act alongside Dwayne, but he killed it. What are the mechanics behind shooting with Michelle Obama? I imagine with the Secret Service, the time right. constraints, there's some moving parts. Right. It's so funny shooting with Michelle. Such a huge honor, but obviously there's a lot of protocol to follow. Mm -hmm. You know, I met her first in the White House. So I walk in and someone came up to me and they go, okay, so, you know, she's gonna come out and she's gonna meet you right here. And then they put a marker on the ground of where she was gonna meet me. Yeah. And I said, you're gonna take a selfie with this hand, and I'm like, oh my God. Okay, with this hand, what if I go with this hand? They're like, we prefer this hand because of just the way her hair is gonna be. And I'm like, okay. She comes out, she doesn't hit the mark. She goes on the other side of me. I'm like, I, so I literally look at the girl, I'm like, oh, do I use my other hand? <laughs> I'm like stressed. So I take a picture with the other hand and I'm so scared they're gonna kick me out of the White House, but it's completely fine. But yeah, there was a lot of um, mechanics involved. Yeah. All right, We're cheers. nothing Can if we cheers? not cheers. Okay, cool. So Which one is this? One, butterfly bakery smoked onions. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Um <laughs> <laughs> so We're fine. Bad. We're good. Oh my god, are you We're kidding good. me? Psh. So I understand that as a kid you'd walk around with a world wrestling championship belt. As and a I've kid. heard you. You still do it? It's in the green room. Okay. <laughs> we got it locked up for you? <laughs> yeah. And I've heard you compare the WWE to Bollywood. Can you unpackage that comparison a little bit for us? The thing I love the most about the WWE is they've taken this really intense sport and they've added such wonderful dramatics to it. And so when you watch WWE, there's wrestling, but the majority of it is like trash talk. Right. <clears throat> trash talk and like all this drama and all this beef happening. And that's how Bollywood is. Bollywood is all about dramatics and all about theatrics. And I'm really drawn to things like that because I'm so interested in how they can hook an audience's attention. I've been to so many wrestling events and on either side of me, there's these huge grown dudes that are like crying at the results of a match that they know is, is orchestrated, but yeah. they're still crying about it. And I think that's magic, truly. Mango, okay, cool. Some small This ads. is in my DNA, I should be okay with this. <clears throat> I'm gonna just unbutton this for a second. <laughs> You're getting a little hot in mm -hmm. here. No, you know what it is? It's fine. Yeah. Honestly, I'm just kidding to make you feel better. <laughs> All right, so besides your obvious charm and charisma, you've built this YouTube legacy through your master of the art of relatability. Mm -hmm. I've heard you say that you will pour over analytics, read comments, and then you have this microprocessor in your brain where you can do some quick math and decide whether or not something is relatable enough. I wonder, does that get harder as you get older? Do you end up like Jay-Z on Kingdom Come, just <laughs> rapping about things no one can relate to? You know what? No one has ever asked me that question, and I need to give you props right now because that's such a good question because that is absolutely what happens. I really pride myself on my ability to be relatable. You know, things that happen in my everyday life, annoying people at the movies, things, something I argued with, with my pa parents, things that anyone watching can be like, yeah, I know what that feels like, and then they share it with their friends. But as my life gets crazy, and I make videos about Oh, I hung out with Dwayne. I hung out with The Rock. Oh, I, someone thought I was cool enough to, to give me a private jet for the day. I understand that the average person can't watch that and be like, same. Let me put some of my modern life pet peeves to you. Yeah, And then give it to you me. just give me All the right. math mm -hmm. as you run it through mm -hmm. the microprocessor mm -hmm. if it's relatable enough to warn a video, okay? All right, let's go. Feeling anxiety at one of those iPad checkout things because the tip options are just 20%, 30%, and 40%. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> because I'm a cheap person and so I'm like, what if I want to give you like 13%? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? What if you don't want the full 15 or 20? Absolutely relatable, yep. Super slow airplane Wi-Fi. Uh, you see, you, you had me at airplane, but the airplane Wi-Fi might not be as relatable. Right. Just because when I lived in Canada, a lot of my flights didn't have Wi-Fi. And then when I moved to America, all my American friends were like, this 20-hour flight doesn't have Wi-Fi? This is so stupid. That teeters. Regretting buying a hoodie for $200 because I saw Jonah Hill wearing it on Instagram. I'm going to say that's just you. This is the halfway mark, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to go halfway further than this point right now that we're at. This, mm -hmm. Okay. Don't psych yourself out though. No, no. No, no, no. <laughs> I 
<laughs> God. Okay, we're good. No, 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 we're chilling. You're good. Yeah. You'll be okay. <laughs> All right, Lily William Ever Crane segment on our show called Explain That Gram, where we do a deep dive on our guest's Instagram, pull interesting pictures that need more context. Okay. So I'll bust out the laptop, I'll show you the picture, you tell me the bigger story, and your Instagram sure. is really an embarrassment of riches. You know why this is bad for a foodie? Because I still want to keep eating it. Like, I still want to eat it because it's delicious, but it hurts so bad. Okay, I'm not going to have any more. <laughs> All right, first things first. Here you are with James Franco and Seth Rogen. Why you is really kissing, went into the vault here. Why is kissing Seth Rogen such a unique experience? Okay, so this. It's <clears throat> all mental. This, this was one of the first major collabs I've ever done in my career. This was years ago before I even lived in LA. And I had this idea to dress up as my mom and kiss Seth Rogen. So, so here's the thing. I don't smoke. Seth Rogen does. I've heard. Lots. Mm -hmm. He does it lots. And so I think I psyched myself into believing that I got secondhand high from kissing him. Caught so a contact high. I think so. So I had to kiss him like two to three times and then I believed that I was high for the rest of the shoot. And so like everything was just super weird. Like his laugh was really <laughs> weird and loud to me. And so it was a very interesting experience because I think I got secondhand high. My boogers are on this now. That's okay. Yeah. It's your napkin to take. Thank you. All right, here we are at the <laughs> Slut Walk with Amber Rose, and of note, 21 Savage <laughs> in the background. Yeah, everyone made fun of this because literally, I was hosting her Slut Walk that year. I love her. I think she's so, just so full of personality and character. And so I took this picture with her, and I didn't even notice that he was in the background. But if you just zoom in on his face, he's so unimpressed with me. He's just like, why are you posing with my girl? Like, why are you here? Why are you touching her? And so, like, I love this picture. I'm thinking about blowing it up poster size. All right. Thus concludes Explain That Gram. So we can lose the laptop. Wrapped? Is this a wrap on this or are we still? You can tap out whenever. Never. I, know, I will never I tap out. Okay. So this next one is the Clark and Hopkins song. Which one is this one? Mm -hmm. This one? Mm -hmm. Oh, you see when there's foreign text on it, that's when you really know. All right, here we go. Mm -mm. Yes, woo! It's a really big bite, why did I do that? <laughs> See, now we're starting to get into like legitimate, like, yeah. this is like, you know? <laughs> so earlier this year, you did a video about fan accounts spotlighting various stands. What's so your can you favorite? say all that again? <laughs> it I happens. feel like my ears are getting... It happens on Hot Ones every Plugged. once in a while. I got you. So earlier this year, you did a mm -hmm. video about the different kinds of celebrity stands. We've dubbed our fans the Spice Lords <laughs> yep. to mixed reviews. Do you give that a thumbs up or do you think we need Spice to go back Lord. to the drawing board there? I'm gonna give it a solid B. Okay. A B. It's it's good though. Right, right. That's, yeah. that's I where our show fans operates. unicorns. That's not that unique. <laughs> Spice Lord is a hundred times more unique. So I think yours is better than mine. But, but just so I know, where is the closest washer? Uh, it's out through the back. Did okay. you hang out in the green room? Yes. There's one in the green room. Is it soundproof? Fire water. Fire water. Okay. Why do I feel like this? <laughs> That's how it happens. That's how it happens. <laughs> There's drool coming out of my mouth. Oh no! Yeah. Mm -mm. <clears throat> mm. Just you know, I was going to say, why do I feel like it doesn't taste hot? But then, but then it got hot. <laughs> I've seen so many guests just skipping through the woods and then step right into a bear trap just like that. Never gets old, never gets old. So recently we had Chrissy Teigen on the show and she delivered a controversial take on why Nutella is trash and basically just an excuse for people to eat chocolate in the morning. Do you care to respond to that? <laughs> Nutella's amazing. <laughs> I wish I had a spoon of Nutella right now. Oh my God, it's really hot. I saw that episode actually. You did? I love Chrissy Teigen. Completely aware that Nutella is, it's just sugar, it's just sugar. But it's really good. I'm gonna put my tongue in there. For the uninitiated, can you explain Tim Hortons? Because there seems to be a real cult following and it's strong with that one, but I'm not sure the American audience really gets it. <laughs> okay. okay. 
Timmy's, I believe, and people are gonna hate on me for saying this, it's a more homely version of Starbucks. Starbucks is like a really long line, it's kind of bougie. Mm -hmm. Things are called all these complicated names. Timmy's is just more homely. We have Timbits, which you guys call donut holes. They're Timbits, and we have ice caps, which are like really good. Is superwomancakes at gmail.com no. still active? <laughs> How embarrassing. I used to make cakes, and I still kind of make cakes. Mm -hmm. So before I thought I would make it on YouTube, I was like, I'm just going to make it as a baker. Um, and I used to make these cakes that were like mediocre. And so I had this Gmail account, this Facebook page. And so I think it is still active, but I, I only made a cake very recently for my day-to-day -day manager. It was a Harry Potter cake. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna die. <laughs> Anyways, this next one is the bomb, beyond insanity. <laughs> I realized I just made the water hot. <laughs> I, I <laughs> yeah, it's that part of the show. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As someone who reps Scarborough proudly, what's the most Toronto thing about Drake? The fact that he says ting. Toronto people say ting a lot. Sweeter ting, hot ting, crying ting. There are a lot of athletes and Hollywood stars that are trying to put their footprint in YouTube, but I'm curious. What rapper do you think would have the best daily vlogs if they committed to the platform? <clears throat> Probably Drake. I was gonna say Will Smith, but he already is killing Instagram. This hurts so bad. Mm hmm And I've read the opinion that you're a better rapper than you are a comedian, and I'm curious, when you look back at your own music videos, what's the song that you're most proud of, and what's the one that you're kind of happy was deprioritized by the algorithm? I'm just gonna turn to a strip show really quick. Okay, that's all right. <laughs> I'm really proud of Voices. A rap song I have called Voices. Yeah. <laughs> They're so bad. Trapped on hot ones. This next one is the Exoresco. Oh my God! This might be the most painful thing I've ever done in my life. <sighs> you know, Charlize, Charlize Theron, she did this show. Your buddy did Charlize. She, did she do all of them? She was in a spot like you are right now, but she found that and okay. rallied to the finish line. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. <sighs> I'm gonna lick this one. Okay. How do you keep brands in check? Because I have some stories to tell, but you know, sometimes you'll get all this like crazy, ridiculously dumb feedback, and maybe you get a little bit incensed. Like, why is this brand telling me how to make a YouTube video? Do you ever have to deal with that? And if so, how do all you the manage time. it? What I do is I write one email just internally for my team where I'm sassing the brand completely, and it doesn't go anywhere except for in my team. And one of my team members actually printed it and framed it and put it on her desk, because <laughs> it's me just being so sarcastic. But yeah, brands tell me all the time, like. I don't think this is the best way for you to talk to your audience about this brand. And I'm like, I've been doing this for eight years with 14 million people watching me. I really know how to talk to my audience, but I get there's legalities and things they want to take care of. Uh, but all the time, I'm negotiating with brands. But I also work with a lot of brands I, I love and who do trust me. <clears throat> all right, Lily. I just want to, can I just have a path to the washroom? When yeah, make sure we clear the way. Make sure that we clear the way. Do you want some ice cream? I'm so sweet. All right, so this is the last dab. We call it the last dab because it's tradition around here to put a little extra on I'm the so last bad. wing. Excuse me, what are you doing? You don't have to if you don't want to, Lily. Just put a little extra on the last wing. You don't have to if you don't want to. What if this whole thing is just there's nothing on yours? You know, we've had people switch the paddles before. I've been challenged in that way. I always come prepared and I'm nothing 
if not a man of dignity. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. What are you gonna do? <clears throat> not that. <laughs> but I feel I cheated, so I'm gonna take a bite of the previous one that I licked. Yeah. Okay. Strong. I'm gonna take a bite of this one. Chase it. There it is. Can I get my bite down? And just one more hurdle for you, Lily Singh. We've talked about the many sides of Lily Singh today. Entertainer, <clears throat> entrepreneur, wrestling super fan, but one thing we haven't touched on is your parents, some of the most popular recurring characters in the history of YouTube. Hold on, let me this out. The ice cream is melting. Yeah. Near the vicinity of my lips. Mm-hmm. True, like it's... Does it help? Well, <laughs> let me tell you, my family could eat all of these and laugh after. My aunt, they're the type of people like when they travel abroad, they have to bring their spices with them in their purse. Like I got hot sauce in my bag, Beyonce, she mm -hmm. got that from my aunt. Cause truly, they can eat the spiciest thing and it will not phase them. I truly believe that my aunt could eat this and she would be unfazed. What happened with you? <clears throat> I was adopted. Well, you heard it here first, breaking news, and look at you, Lily Singh. 10 vegan chicken wings up, 10 vegan chicken wings down. And honestly, I was just fronting the whole and time. And that was no problem. I was fronting no the whole time. No problem at all. And now there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet <laughs> for you, Lily. Yeah. This camera, this camera, this camera. Let the people know what you have going on in your life. Um, things are really heating up in my life. Uh, I gotta go a bunch of exciting stuff. I just started my own production company, so I'm gonna be directing and writing and producing. I have my 12 collabs of Christmas coming out, which will be like all those cool collabs you talked about. And also, I'm gonna take the washroom for 30 whole minutes right now. Good job, Lily, good job. Kill some ice cream. I have to say, that was a hundred times worse than what I thought it was gonna be. Hey, it's a badge of honor for us, we'll take it. <clears throat> Thank that you, is intense. Hey, what's going on, Spice Lords? This is Sean Evans checking in by his lonesome, and you know what that means. It's time for another hot sauce PSA. And for two years, we've been working on making the perfect entry-level sauce, something that's good for everyone. Number one on our board, and now it is finally here. The classic is our contemporary twist on the original vinegar-based sauces throughout American history with chili de arbol peppers and garlic for that perfect balance. As always, people who order the Hot Ones monthly subscription box got it first, but now it's available for everyone. Heatness.com, Heatness.com to pick up the classic. The classic. It's for the people.